In life, nothing pauses. Everything moves in parallel and your code should too. In this video, I'm gonna go over how you can use Python to not just run one thing at a time, but having multiple things run simultaneously and in parallel using Python threading. So let's not waste any more time and dive into the video. All right, so let's go over threading in Python. So right now we have two functions, print numbers, which just prints one through five, and then we have print letters, which will just print A, B, C, D, E. So if we go ahead and run this application, we can see printed to the terminal is one, two, three, four, five, and then A, B, C, D, E. Now, one thing about Python is it has to execute off of the main thread, and the main thread needs to run concurrently. So we have print numbers, it needs to wait till print numbers is complete before moving on to print letters. That's just how Python works. So we can see one, two, three, four, five, and then A, B, C, D, E. Now, one thing we can do is implement threading, which will create a new thread, which will be able to run tasks almost in parallel. So Python doesn't support multi-threading due to the GIL, but it does allow for external threading. So we can come up here and just say import threading. And now to be able to create a thread, instead of just printing these functions right here, we can go ahead and create two different threads. So we can say thread one equals threading dot thread, where we need to specify the target, which is print numbers. And then we can pretty much do the exact same thing and just call this thread two, where we're gonna say the target is print letters. Now that we've specified the threads, we need to start each thread. So we can go ahead and say thread one dot start. And we need to say thread two dot start. And we can actually add this at the very end of here by just saying dot start here. But for now, just to make it easier, I'm just gonna have it right underneath so we can see the start for both of them. Now with each thread starting, we need to stop each thread. And to stop a thread in Python, we need to be able to use the join. And the join is a synchronization method that ensures the main program waits for the thread to be complete. So on top of both of these threads, let's go ahead and say join. All right, so we have the starting and the stopping of our threads with our threads linked to functionality. So now let's go ahead and just run our application. All right, so if we run the application, we're gonna see the exact same thing. So threading hasn't really came into place yet because what we can see is the print numbers is running and then the print letters are running. And it's actually running on two separate threads in Python, but because again, they're executing so fast, print numbers just happens to be complete before print letters. Now to be able to see this in action, instead of just saying threading.thread, let's call thread threading.timer so we can create a timer for thread one, where we say we just wanna wait maybe one second because that means the second thread will execute and be complete first. So we can go ahead and say that and then print numbers. And now when we run it, instead of thread one executing first and then thread two, well, thread one is actually gonna execute first still, but it's not going to be complete because we're gonna wait one second. So that's when the second thread is gonna kick in and actually run and finish before thread one even finishes. So if we go ahead and now run this, we can see it says A, B, C, D, E, and then one, two, three, four, five. And that's technically because we have them running on separate threads. And we can see what thread each is running on. We can go ahead and say print thread one, and we can find the name by saying dot name. And we can do the same thing for thread two. So if we go ahead and say dot name. This will tell us the name of each of these threads. So if we go ahead and run the application again, we can see that it's gonna be called thread one and thread two. Now, if we want, we can change the name. So we can see that thread two is running print letters and it's just gonna grab the method that's involved. But what we could also do is just say comma name equals and we can say print letters thread. 
And once you create a name for one of the threads, when you go and check the name, it'll now print letters thread instead of just saying the default number attached to each thread with the functionality that's attached. Now, sometimes you'll want to pass arguments to the function of your threads that are your that you are currently running. And you can do this through the arguments parameter. And let's go ahead and just delete all of this just so we can create a new way of a new example for our arguments where we can say def greet where we can pass in name and times. And then we can say for in range of times, we want to print a F string of hello, and we'll just print our name, which is going to be the argument that we pass into this functionality through a thread. So here we can just say we want to create a new thread of threading dot instantiate a new thread where our target is gonna be equal to greet, which is our function for our Python. And then we can go ahead and just pass in our arguments where we can say is Alice and three. We then need to go ahead and say thread.start and thread.join. If we run this application, we can see that we're gonna get hello Alice three different times from our thread of calling our greet functionality because we're calling this greet only one time, but we're passing in Alice and we're saying print it three different times through our thread. Now, there's also a way to be able to use a synchronized lock and that's by using our lock on our threads. Now, a risk is when multiple threads can access shared resources like a file, database, or even a print function there's a risk that they might step on each other's toes. And a lock is a synchronization primitive that ensures only one thread can access the critical code at one time. And we can do this by using acquire and a release. So by delete all of this, we can create a new lock. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to paste this in here where we can see lock is equal to threading.lock. And then inside our functionality of synchronized print, we are passing in an argument of in where our lock dot acquire and then our for in range of our threading dot current thread name. So we're going to be printing the thread name, which is going to be our main thread and then lock dot release. So lock dot acquire this tries to get the lock. If another thread has the current lock, then this will block until the lock is released or complete. And the release is just the exact opposite. It releases a lock so the threads can acquire it. So for example, if we wanted to now create a new thread that can now go against that synchronized print, we can have our threads equal our threading dot thread with our target being the synchronized print, our arguments of five, four range and three. And here we are just going to be calling this like crazy based on new threads. So if we ran this application now, we can see that we are going to be running this application but thread one is going to be running until it is completely over before thread two kicks in and then before thread three kicks in. And this will allow us to be able to lock certain threads before releasing them to the next thread that's coming in.